Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Flow Show. It's Wednesday, 30th August, nearly at the end of the month. Hope you're doing well. Um, I would say good morning to K Man, but I'm not sure where he is. Uh, maybe uh, he's gone offline or something. Anyway, so let's crack on. Anyway, um, starting off in China um, and uh, the China Security Journal uh, out overnight with uh, more analysts' thoughts. Uh, saying that China's one is to get support from the PBOC and the economy. Um, we pay attention more to these analysts than we perhaps do uh, to some in the Western world because if they put something out, it can be from the slant of uh, state uh, news drops, if you like, um, so they can indicate things to come. Um, yesterday, yesterday, we had deadlines that China were going to cut rates on existing mortgages as uh, soon as yesterday. Um, we're still waiting, I think, and there's something slipped under the radar we haven't seen before um, or seen yet, but um, we haven't heard anything about mortgage rate cuts, although China's Bank of Communications uh, was said to initiate a mortgage rate cut, um, looking to make the purchase of first homes more affordable and lift the housing slump. That was reported by the SCMP, the uh, South China Morning Post. Um, but we still haven't heard of them actually cutting rates uh, as far as I can tell. Um, in other China-related uh, manipulation, uh, I mean regulation, um, China regulators are said to order interbank dealers to stop providing real-time quotes. Um, now, this isn't this isn't new. It's something they used to do in the past. Um, they're going to stop providing public quotes according to new regulations as their licenses do not allow the provision of public data. Uh, dealers can only provide individual point-to-point -point quotes. Um, now, they did something similar to this in March, uh, cutting quotes given out in various markets. Um, they cited uh, security laws when they brought in all those new security measures. Um, so this isn't something new. Way they actually used to do it in the old ways. Um, so now people are getting quotes via chat groups. Um, that's how they, as I say, that's how they did it in the old days. So they've gone a bit backwards in terms of that, but it's uh, just another bit of trying to close up the information that comes out of China. Um, in other rate news, apparently uh, fixed term deposit rates at some China state banks will be lowered by 10 to 25 basis points, according to Reuters sources. So we heard about that uh, also, that they might tinkle deposit rates uh, and apparently there's further smoke to that fire. Um, now, over at the Bank of Japan, uh, we've had uh, some what could be construed as pretty hawkish comments uh, in relative terms from one of their bods, uh, Tamura, BOJ's Tamura. Um, he sees it as continuing to ease, uh, can sees it as appropriate to continue with easing at this point. Um, hopes to see a clearer picture of inflation in the first quarter of 2024, but says that stable 2% inflation target is clearly within sight, although uncertainties remain for achieving the inflation target. Says so corporate price setting behavior has changed from the period of deflation. Uh, there's now a positive cycle between wages and inflation um, being seen as wage rises have improved consumer sentiment. On inflation, is likely to slow for the time being, then accelerate moderately again. Uh, we can't rule out the chance inflation may overshoot expectations. Uh, the economy is likely to continue recovering driven by domestic demand, uh, and also sees a chance that GDP will overshoot estimates. Says he believes that we can expect high wage growth in next year's spring wage negotiations, um, but we need to base decisions on the data as the figures come in, and a little more time is needed to judge on the price target. Uh, speaking about exiting, he said in the scenario of exiting easy policy, um, ending negative rates and YCC are all options, However, abandoning the negative rate wouldn't be monetary tightening or a rate hike, as monetary conditions will remain loose. So, uh, RCK's uh, popped in. Maybe uh, we've found the hawk among the doves. 
Hey, good morning, everybody. Um, yeah, I mean, um, you can qualify it as uh, one of, he's one of the Bank of Japan hawks. He, he was already um, speaking about that inflation last last year, actually. Um, but yeah, we can, the Bank of Japan hawks are still, would still be qualified as doves elsewhere. Um, but um, yeah, but if, the thing is as well, I mean, he's, he's talking about January and March. Um, you can hardly say that that is going to uh, to get the market all excited and uh, and and going going all uh, gang ho on uh, here we go. You know, um, it, it's it's hard to get really excited. Even though he's one of the hawks, it's uh, Ueda has already told us uh, on uh, where was it on Saturday that uh, he's not in a hurry. Um, yeah, well, yeah, he's one of the hawks, and 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 that's it. But then. He's, He's not saying that they should start to um, to 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 change stuff uh, over the next meeting in September, and that again, I think the market is just going to shrug its uh, shoulders and uh, and move on until uh, until they really change something. Yeah, but it's it's interesting to hear some of these thoughts on on the exiting. You know, they're they're at negative rates, and he's calling it going from negative to zero. Okay, it's only uh, ten pips, but it's still rate hike and you can tell they're not going to sell it as a rate hike um they're going to sell it as uh, just undoing negative rates so you, you're getting an indication of how they're going to exit when they do it's not going to be turning around and hiking in 50 pit clips exactly. like we saw everyone else do um it's going to be slow and steady but uh, yeah. although he's, he's always put that q1 2024 uh, target on it um it's not going to stop the market maybe getting a little bit uh, hawkish again when we get close to meetings um, looking for further language changes from some of the others a bit of a sentiment change so yeah we're not we're not expecting any uh, huge moves but uh, we've seen prior meetings the market gets a little bit hawkish into it um, starts uh, covering positions and whatnot so I think when we get comments like this we need to watch out for similar at each uh, BOJ meeting even if they do nothing um, but the snowball continues to roll. One day, maybe we'll see them out of uh, monetary policy. Maybe before we're old and grey, Kay, or older and greyer. <laughs> yeah, older and greyer. Yeah. I hope I hope I can see a change before I retire. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're going to retire at some point, are you? Um, um, well, I don't know. It depends. If I win the if I win the Euro Millions, uh, I'm retiring tomorrow, mate. No, actually, yeah. not on, tomorrow, on Friday. Saturday morning. Okay. Well, I'm uh, I'm not uh, I'm retiring in the grave, um, trading to the grave, as far as I'm concerned, because uh, it's too exciting not to trade. But anyway, who knows? If I if we share the Euro Millions, then I'll join you on the beach, mate. Um, in, in the meantime, uh, we crack on uh, with uh, trying to earn some bucks out of this game. Uh, PM Kushida over in Japan uh, has all but confirmed that they're going to bring down the, the retail gasoline price, uh, or has confirmed they're going to aim to bring down the retail gasoline price uh, to extend the subsidies that were due to end uh, September. Um, they're going to be kicking on. Um, over in upside down land in Australia, we've had some CPI data out. Um, if I can find it, there we go. Uh, CPI a little softer than expected, 4.9% uh, year on year. This is a, one of the, their new monthly numbers that they started doing this year. Usually uh, they print CPI uh, on a quarterly basis. So this is a new year on year number. Um, so some analysts saying that uh, all possibly rules out uh, a hike, another hike from the RBA uh, as uh, one source uh, Newswire quoted, it's hanging by a thread um, on whether it's hiking or whether they're going to hike or not. Uh, numbers keep continuing like that. They probably won't, but we shall see. Um, inflation day in the rest of the Eurozone and elsewhere. Um, we're getting the regional German numbers popping in. Bit mixed. Um, not No real huge changes. Uh, North Rhine was the early number, up a pip to 59 um, we've had some of the others. I don't know if they list them all here. Let's have a look if I can find them. Uh, they were all there. We go. So, Baden-Württemberg up two pips. B 
Bavaria, down two pips, Brandenburg, up a pip, Hess, down a pip. So you're getting the message here. Some up, some down. What it all is doing is staying sticky around that six high sixes mark. We get the pan German number later on today. Uh, we can find it and it's going to be expected in um, CPI down two pips to 6%. Uh, the Eurozone measure down two pips to 6.3%. Given those numbers this morning, anywhere 6, 6.2 is probably reasonable to be expected. So we probably won't get much change if it's uh, up a couple, down a couple on that expectation there. Um, now, what is coming in the pipe for Germany is wages and uh, they've risen at a record pace in Q2, um, up 6.6% versus 5.6% in the prior quarter, the highest since the data began in 2008. It's also taken CPI, oh, it's also taken wages above CPI. Um, so wages have finally turned positive over there. Um, though they have been stagnating quite a bit. Um, what that has done, or what it will do, is it will get some uh, Bundesbank hawks worried about a wage price spiral kicking in if those are maintained. And the Germany went through the similar situation to the UK in terms of lots of strikes, uh, lots of wage demands, the big industry uh, wage negotiations they have at the end of the year, beginning of the new year. Um, all kicking in as well. So that'll be something that they're worried about. It'll also be something that um, the ECB will be worried about. They don't see wages as a definitive problem right now, um, but if we see wages continue to rise across the Eurozone, um, it is going to start reflecting more in their language and their thinking down the line and keep them on the hawkish side. Um, so that's something we need to keep an eye on. Um, Spain CPI was out this morning as well. Uh, where has it gone? There we go. Um, CPI up 2.6% versus 2.3% prior. Was expected that high as well. Um, the Eurozone measure, not as high as expected, but still a jump up to 24 from 2.1%. So just starting to see a bit of stickiness coming in the, to the inflation numbers again. Uh, we saw US inflation moving higher. Uh, we'll keep an eye on the rest of the mob over there to see if it follows suit uh, in some of the other numbers, uh, which we'll get, uh, I believe, later this week. Um, UK mortgage data was out as well, and that all-important uh, consumer credit number. Mortgages, uh, they were a bit softer, 49.5, 49.4K versus 51 expected down, 10K, give or take, from uh, last month. Um, but looking at these numbers, the total mortgage lending was was pretty flat. Um, you know, usually you're looking for something in the billions. So, you know, 230 million um, versus 111 million prior. That suggests to me that although we're getting decent numbers in the mortgage approvals, the mortgage lending is looking like it's remortgaging rather than new lending, uh, which tends to, to show up in these numbers more. So this is people probably locking in rate hikes or locking in rates as best they can um, for fear of further rate hikes. Plus, we've also got a lot of people coming to the end of their mortgage deals and seeing refinancing there. So not, uh, not a huge ton of new lending going in there. Um, in the consumer credit numbers, um, always look at that plastic spending to see if there's any uh, red flags popping up. If that was unchanged. Uh, 600 million, so still pretty much half of the total consumer credit uh, borrowing done there. The rest, uh, credit uh, car loans, um, other lending like that, um, was down to 600 million from 1 billion. So again, no real flags coming in there um, in terms of uh, people getting out their depth on borrowing. Um, just poking back uh, to yesterday, got some house price data coming out as well. Um, the FHFA number coming in a little bit hotter year on year, 3.1 versus 2.9. Hotter on the month as well by a pip, um, although lower than last month. Um, the S&P, Shiller numbers as well, looking fair enough. Um, house price is down 1.2% in the 20 city metric uh, but not down uh, as much as expected 
up 0.9 on the month. So nothing, again, no red flags coming from house prices here. It has been a bit of softening, uh, which is to be expected, but uh, nothing that uh, anyone needs to worry about uh, just yet. So the housing market tickety-boo for the moment. Um, what did take a little bit of a stinker or, or a sinker, however you want to call it, um, was the conference board consumer confidence. Um, it was expected to rise two pips. It fell pretty nearly enough, 10 pips um, to 106.1. Um, that took the market a little by surprise. However, what was uh, big in the numbers was that one year CPI expectations rose a pip. So that was a bit of a counter to those numbers. Um, all the underlying components uh, dropped. Uh, current conditions fell to 144.8 from 153 prior and uh, expectations fell to 80.2 from 88 prior. So soft numbers all around the consumer. It has been on a bit of a strong run of late. Um, so no surprise to see a bit of a pullback perhaps. Uh, but as I say, those one year inflation expectations that keeps the Fed on uh, the hawkish side as opposed to seeing the consumer weakening overall. Um, Jolts was out as well, as you can see there, a drop to 8.827 million further, pulling away from that uh, 10 million mark that was very sticky all through the year. Um, that added uh, to the Fed's, uh, well, some have taken it as adding to the Fed's uh, soft landing. I see jobs growth. Uh, pulling back a bit, but the details again underneath weren't that bad. The quits rate, this is people who decide to change up jobs, um, was largely unchanged. Um, separations, um, layoffs, discharges, i.e. people coming out of the workforce, being laid off or whatever, was down. Um, so that's not a negative at all. That's a positive. That means people aren't getting laid off. So although the job openings flags one thing so this this what this does it shows firms offering positions there's lots of questions over this data whether whether it's good data or not but what you can uh, ascertain for that is that either firms aren't finding that they've got the positions available now or they don't want to offer the positions anymore that could be due to increased costs so they can't afford to take on new workers therefore they won't advertise new workers um so that's something that if it continues, it may mean that we then start to see job losses coming in because if people aren't offering jobs, then you're going to get more people who can't find a job um, and thus unemployment stays high or starts creeping higher because if firms are finding it tough um, to, or they haven't got enough money to employ people, the next step is usually that they start getting rid of people. Um, so that's why this number is looked at uh, quite significantly. But as I say, the underlying details suggest that there's no issues just yet. But no this is one we need to keep an eye on. Yes, mate. It is very good for the Fed. I mean, that is exactly what the Fed wants to see: the demand, uh, the demand in um, uh, starting to slow. The, the 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 big number in there is the ratio uh, that we see uh, between uh, the, the the offerings and uh, and people looking for jobs coming down. So that is the uh, that that uh, ratio is is really playing into the Fed's book um, right now because that's what the Fed really want. They wanted to to. Uh, um, Recalibrate the, the 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 discrepancy or the divergence between the demand and the supply. And now uh, the uh, uh, people demanding workers are are starting to come down. So um, that's really good for the Fed. And I think that's where the market reacted so um, abruptly or violently, especially in the equity markets, um, thinking that it's really um, now doing uh, doing the Fed's job and uh, and that. Uh, that is really what they want to see to um, to firmly remain at least on pause right now. Where the balance could become really bad is that if we get a bad uh, labor report at the end of uh, at the end of the week, because then that would mean that both demand and uh, and 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 supplies and and um, that the whole labor market is starting to falter. And that's what we've talked about as a very big domino. I think we we'll, we'll have to see the combination of those numbers and what's going to happen uh, well adp is one but um, especially at the end of the at the end of the week on friday what's going to happen there and 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 that could then 
provide us with a with a more clear picture, right, for this month. Green model, but it's that yeah. Time. So, what, what, I mean, this jolt's late data is a bit lagging, as you can see, it's, it's July data, so it is a bit behind the curve. Um, but really, what if what you want to be trading or looking to trade is whether we see a, a softening in the jobs market that's a, a nice shallow slope down, shall we say. Um, if it's a cliff edge, then that's going to be cause all sorts of problems. So if it's a nice, uh, smooth slowing of jobs, um, unemployment rate just ticking up a tiny bit, you know, maybe we're getting 100k job gains and uh, just a little tick up in unemployment. That's all fine and dandy. If it goes off a cliff, or otherwise, you know, if we start seeing negative 200s employment rate going up uh, three pips at a time, that sort of thing, then, you know, that's a different kettle of fish to trade and the market's going to turn to cuts um, really quickly and quite violently. Um, so that's how you need to judge it when you're trading this data. And this this jolt stuff, as I say, doesn't signal anything um, cliff edgy at the moment. Um, shallow slope, shall we call it that, um, is what it's looking like at the moment. But we'll keep an eye on it. We'll wait for the next one. Um, just in other news, uh, apparently uh, Walmart is asking pharmacists uh, in its branches to voluntary take wage cuts and reduce hours worked to save costs. Cuts uh, are aimed at higher paid pharmacists nationwide. So there we go. That's uh, another indication that we may start to be seeing turns in the market. Um, you know, if someone like Walmart is asking pharmacists to take wage cuts, they're not going to be looking to perhaps take any new pharmacists on. So that falls into the jokes data. So things like that. Now you can see how all, this, all these numbers are put together and how it works in the real world. So big uh, employer Walmart looking to cut costs there. Um, if that starts to spread to other departments, other places, that's going to flag up uh, some problems to come. Uh, that's it. Uh, all I've got on the news front. Uh, anything uh, you've picked up, Kay, you want to share? Mm, not, uh, not really. No, nothing, you know, to... to... Nothing really market moving. Um, no, no, no. Cool, no worries. You covered it all. Uh, sorry, mate? You covered it all. Let's look forward. Cool. <laughs> yeah, no worries, mate. Uh, Ali, I'm assuming you got your big figures um, wrong in your euro sterling trade. I hope you're not short at 85.05 while it's trading 86.05. Otherwise, you would have been stopped, mate. So I'm going to assume uh, your question... Um, is uh, a big figure higher. Um, yeah, so you're short up at 86s. Let's get it on the screen. So yeah, the old uh, scene of the crime, around 86, 86.10. We've been here before several times. That's why it's a level on my chart. It's a bit uh, up and down. Sometimes we hit it, sometimes we break it, sometimes it's support, sometimes it's resistance. Um, so you got uh, a trade on there. The only thing I don't like about this, as you can see, is we banged our head, we've dipped, but we've come back pretty quickly. Um, the price action suggests that we might be up for a little break, um, but this is Euro Sterling. That can, that can take five minutes or it can take five days. Um, but for me, I'm still long down from the bottom here. I'm happy to see it up here. And uh, if we do get a break, maybe we'll be looking at for another nudge up to uh, mid to high. 86s, um, but for now, you're short up there. Uh, take profit 84.75. Yeah, that's that's a fair enough uh, distance away. But watch that we've had this dip and it's got balled up pretty quickly. Um, suggests the price action is a bit bullish this morning. Um, you're looking for more rockets and big moves. I see as well. Um, what can push the euro sky rocket higher? Ooh, sky rocket. Um, yeah, it's got uh, it's added a little bit of impetus, obviously, from that data yesterday from the Fed. Um, and this is the market in a nutshell. This is how we can swing day to day, data point to data point. One minute we're under 108, perhaps looking a bit softer, bounces are a bit shallow. Um, he, you know, can come back just as quickly. Um, and now it's looking like we might be heading up uh, to 110. So it really is light switch markets at the moment um so you've got to 
pick your levels. As you can see there, we hit the trend line. Got that one. That one. So we hit the trend line again. Um, you know, I'm not going to say the trend line did its job. The numbers came out and helped it do its job. Um, the data helped do its job. Um, so if we hadn't had that good data uh, or that data as it came out, bad data, depending on how you want to look at it, um, we could have been through there and heading towards 107. So this is one of those times where it looks like the text did its job, but I'm I'm not so sure. I think there was a bit of uh, luck from the, the the news and data, but it is what it is. We're you know back up testing towards 109. Um, we've got some moving averages up here. The next number 109.40. If we get above there, is a bit of an old pivot support and resistance point. So you got to keep an eye on that. Do I think it's going to 112? Who knows? It, it's as I say. This is light switching between data points. We get, um, you know, really decent ADP later. We're expecting 195 from uh, 324 last week, uh, last month. Um, you know, if it comes in 350, we're probably going to go uh, down to 108 again, maybe even uh, under. So right now, I'm I'm very neutral on direction. I see nothing that really kicks us one way or another significantly. Um, so I'm just going to sit either side. If I see a level I like, I'm going to trade it. If I don't like it, I'm not going to trade it. Um, but for me, yeah, it's just a bit, uh, a bit all over the place at the moment, and you've got to be ready for that to swing between the data points. What, what are you making generally, K prices? Obviously, we've got end of month in the mix as well. Exactly. Exactly. We, we are in end of month. Yeah, we had those data out, but then uh, on Friday, everything can change again with the NFPs. Um, I, I don't know. I really want to see uh, us pass this week. Now, how, I, the, the question was like, uh, how Euro? Yeah, but the, the thing is, you I think you asked your question uh, about with, with the undertone of saying it can't go higher because you say like, what about recession fears? How how euro long justified if US data continue to beat? Well, the US data are not beating. Now, looking forward into September, there's there's a lot of people coming back online. Um, traditionally, the um, the seasonal say that it should be a good month for the dollar. But uh, if this uh, Friday we are seeing um, an, an, a notable slowing in the U.S. jobs market. We know what the reaction is going to to be, right? The, the, I mean, the dollar is going to get hit because it, it's just the biggest market. Um, and and um, but it all depends. And I'm saying like a bad report, okay? That, that's something below 50k or um, and and several. Um, Tenth of percent higher in uh, in um, the unemployment rate, um, then the dollar is obviously going to get hit. Um, now, what is really going to put the 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 euro higher is better data out of euro out of Europe. And for the time being, uh, yeah, we are just uh, uh, playing ping pong in between in between levels. Yesterday. Um, the, the dollar fared less well versus everything because of those data. It threw also, we cannot forget um, and not uh, omit that, it threw the, the, uh, the end of month models, uh, not upside down, but it, it threw them virtually in the water, into, the, into the water because before that, there was um, a lot of models, and most of them predicting dollar buying for the end of the end of the month. We we did see it yesterday unfold until those numbers, <clears throat> and um, but now with those equity markets having rallied, with the bond markets having rallied, there is uh, likely a lot less to do. Uh, perhaps even if people have already done it, there there may be nothing to do left to do. So it's an open play until uh, until tomorrow evening. Um, tomorrow afternoon in, in that regard. Um, yeah, what I, I think is just data, you know, that, that could turn it around. Um, we have sticky inflation in Europe, but then on the other side, we have weakening uh, uh, other um, economic data weakening. Um, and we haven't seen the, the last big dominoes in, this, in the States really fall over. And, and one of them is going to be the labor market. So get, get, 
bad data in uh, in in uh, in the US, then you're going to see the the dollar roll over more more than more than likely, you know. Um, and until then, we it's it's uh, sit back and wait, uh, see uh, see what's going to happen in trade ranges. Yeah, exactly. Um, I mean, I, I took a little bit of a pasting yesterday. I, after that data, I thought I'd buy the dip into the, the broken sort of 146.50. I did at 145. I got stopped out at 144.80. Um, and uh, sorry, 145.80. Uh, I was in at 146 and 146.50s. So yeah, I thought we might get a retrace of this data on the end of month stuff, and it didn't happen or didn't happen as quickly. So. You know, sometimes you can do a little fishing and uh, you end up catching an old boot uh, or nothing at all. Um, and that was uh, the story of my dolly in. But, you know, then again, that suggests that all that move was was end of month more than anything else. Um, you know, the flow's coming in. Then as soon as you get one big couple of big pieces of data, bosh, uh, there's suddenly no bid in the market and you're off uh, nearly 200 pips. Um that's the way it works out. And we've seen a little bit of a claw back today, but it doesn't look as strong as what we saw yesterday. You know, maybe we look to when the, the Yanks come in, see if there's more to be done. But again, you know, it's hard to to try and find a trade in all this. Um, and if you do, if you're going to try and trade the breaks like I did, you've got to keep it small, keep your risk manageable. So if you do get uh, caned, if it doesn't work, you're not going to break the bank doing it. You're not going to lose your account doing it. You lose a few pips. You lose some money, you get up and uh, you're going to again look for the next trade. Um, so, dollar yen in general, you know, look at it uh, from a technical perspective. We had a bit of a rally up. Um, let's see what that 38.2 fib is. Um, so, it's a bit of an old one. Um, historically, I can't be bothered to go all the way back because it must be a big one. Um, but that's uh, an old level up there, 147. Just above 147 there, so decent level. It's uh, near enough for uh, some of the old traffic area when we was up at the highs, but it's reversed pretty quickly. So all the work has to be done again. We're already trying to resist at 146.50 again, um, as you can see around there. So the old level, the old traffic zone that we had prior to that break is back in play again. Um, what it does from here, I have no idea. Um, some of the other pairs already looked at uh, Euro Sterling. Uh, Kiwi still keep an eye on that's now made a bit of a bounce. Didn't quite get up to that 59, 90. The prior high is up there again, um, up towards that big level up in the, the towards 0.60. So still not out the woods as far as uh, what's going on down here at the lows at the 59s. Um, you know, not even making a new high subsequent to that one. Uh, back last week. Um, so again, significant price action showing there. It's not quite ready to push up yet, so it's still in the balance. Just holding this intermediate level around 59.40s. If we get below there, then we're probably heading back down. And I'll be just as cautious if on another move down to 59 as I was yesterday before we got this bounce. Um, I don't think we're quite done here. Um, I did chop a bit more of my longs. I'm going to keep my sell stops at uh, the same size down below this trend line, um, which I am nudging down a bit as the trend line moves lower because um, that is where I want to park my stops below. Um, but I won't let it get too far. Um, I might adjust that trade if that trend line uh, continues moving uh, significantly lower. Um, Kay, do you want to have a look at uh, a few? Yeah, why not, mate? Um... I need to show something because there's whoops there's been something uh, strange going on in the uh, uh, short term sterling yields. Um, this this happened yesterday at some stage, and um, so there's been there's been this big jump, like uh, 20 25 BPs in the uh, in the twos and in the fives, and and in nowhere else and we were trying to figure out what what it may be um and and why cable didn't really follow this move it, it does seem to be correct um if if we because it, it gets updated again now i don't know whether there's there's been some um uh contracts being renewed whether it's end of month rebalancing but we we need to keep an eye on what what's happening over there because it's only the short term it's it's not the the 
the more medium term. Yeah, it it, it rallied a bit, but, but we're talking about small BPs here. Um, but if you look at the differentials as well, the, it went like really, really sharply in favor of the uh, of the sterling. So we we've got to keep an eye on sterling um, on the back of this in into into month end because it could be only month end, and we haven't seen the sterling benefit from it. Uh, other than uh, being a bit higher uh, versus the dollar, like all other currencies are. Um, but um, as I said, perhaps it's like um, some contracts are re um, rolled over or um, month end stuff. And, and we are scratching our head a little bit. If anyone has a plausible explanation, that may be uh, come, uh, um, maybe coming handy. Um, would, it the, would it be the uh, bond roll if those, if those yields are... Uh indicative of of a futures prices yeah it could, be, it, could be, it could be it could be you know um because obviously september's a contract uh yeah it's a very contract. it's a very active one right um um it could be but it but it's a big move and correlation algos must have been switched off because they no, nothing picked up on it we, we even fixed a pretty low one in the cable yesterday right uh, around 4 p.m um all right dollar yen we went ran up to this um, extension here at uh, 147 and a quarter, even went a little bit higher. I think it's a combination of both. One thing is 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 end of month, as Ryan already said. The other one is um, uh, the way they're not giving us anything to chew on in uh, in um, when he was in the hole. Um, and and I reckon the it, we had that was the combination. Now, uh, if we wouldn't have had those numbers, I think we would still be trading up here. Um, I I'd say if you look at what the equity markets did over the over the month, I don't really know the bond market, but uh, it, it could be that the yen remains on the defensive um, until tomorrow evening, actually, or, or until tomorrow 4 p.m. London time. It could be. I'm not saying it will. I say it could be. Okay. Um, it, it looks as if the 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 yen process remain underpinned and. Um, testimony of these is this euro yen we are very close to those uh, highs we had uh, a bit earlier this month and um, if you look at it and, and I have to go back onto the weekly because uh, the last time we were above 160 in, 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 in the euro yen was uh, back in uh, 2008 and um, uh, so <sighs> We are very close, and I, I wouldn't rule it out that we are going to have a look at this extension here, 163 quarters perhaps, before the month is over. And, and I don't know, it looks like uh, euro is, is pretty big, uh, and the dollar yen is just higher, I think, due to those crosses. We find it back as well in uh, sterling yen. Okay, we, oh, no, that's the cable. Um, sterling yen. All right, it, it's not as high as the as the um, euro yen, obviously, because euro sterling is a is a big figure higher than uh, a big figure of the lows. Uh, but but we are gradually pushing uh, again. So yesterday we had this uh, the, the data um, called the 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 short yen of guard, but then we are already back at those levels. If you look at the crosses, we are back and above. Uh, even those levels that we were trading yesterday before the US data, okay? Um, and and there's, there's many of them, there's many of them. And that's what makes me think that, okay, the market is probably trading that Bank of Japan being slow as well, but that makes me think, if, if you look at OZN has broken up, for instance, um, yesterday and, and Monday, Monday afternoon and, and yesterday, makes me think that we may need perhaps a small extension to this before the uh, the month is over. So just to keep an eye on uh, on what's happening in uh, in the yen. Um, yeah, Brian, I know you always like the cable. <coughs> <clears throat> Sorry, we are back above this, um, this uh, 15, call it 15, 25 zone in the cable, holding pretty well. I think the next level here is back up at 126.80 before we can start to talk about 127 and a quarter. Uh, let's quickly look where the fibs are of this latest move. 
Yeah, it's all around there, you know, 80, 90, and then uh, mid, uh, low to mid 127s, those, those levels are still roughly, uh, roughly valid. If we would if we would start to get higher again, if for instance we would have like a, a, another a disappointing uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. data point, um, it's going to follow the rest, I think, because I don't see much move, um, many moves on uh, on on the crosses barring sterling yen, but uh, it's. Um, it could follow the rest of the dollars and and why not now that we are back above this one uh, 26 15 30 that, uh, that that we push up uh, a little bit higher it, it's not um yesterday those numbers and the the subsequent uh, equity market and bond reaction um as i said earlier they may have killed a lot of those uh, models um calling for the end of month so for me um they could have been um, completely trashed those expectations, and um, I'm going to be data dependent really on uh, for 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 the rest of the week basically. And I don't have a very big view, but something um, tells me in 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 those end of month uh, end of month models though tells me that the euro is not it may not get sold off uh, versus the dollar um, as much as the rest. So that tells me that perhaps the euro crosses are just going to keep their uh, their bit tone. Um, we are in this wedge again. Tried to break out, went back into it. Um, here we are, one hundred nine, and then um, I think Ryan already mentioned that those those one hundred nine forties. They are going to be a level uh, a level to watch. Um, and again, um, I don't have a preferred um direction right here and now i'm really going to be data dependent it could be that uh, on the next set of data we are back at 107 three quarters i think we should find uh buyers on dips also because of the equity markets but um i'm i'm not picking a direction right here or i'm not entering into anything uh right here, right here anyway um there's an interesting one to watch on the crosses um, yeah, Dollar Canada is back into this 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 zone here. Um, it, it's a bit of a it's a bit of a strange one because dollars have rebounded very sharply on the back of the API yesterday. Uh, APIs came out with a with a really big uh, draw of over 11 uh, million barrels. It's it's really a, a blind dart in that stuff. But look at this one, um, and this one could get interesting as well um, if. We are turning around this level. We are turning around. This is around 147.60. We tried once. If we fail here, there, there could be a bit of a move uh, lower down. <coughs> but if in turn oil fails with the way euro behaves right now, then we could be in for a little bit of a break, just in, in, in terms of today and tomorrow, you see. Um, we, we could be just keep an eye on what's happening around 147.60, okay? And then if we fail, then we are talking again about uh, about those mid to high 146s here, which is now like really starting to be uh, a heavy traffic zone. Every time we get there, uh, there's there's a bit of activity somewhere between 147 and 146 three quarters, okay? Um, but but I find it an interesting watch this one now uh, because we are perhaps trying to go or in in turn fail here okay so that's a, that's an interesting one for me to watch um silver held the resistance silver held the latest resistance the one that we've started to build up from may so that one needs to be respected around 2480 we we spoke about that level already uh before um yeah i mean just uh, respect this this um uh, this um, trend line, I would say, um, and then see where we end up and where we start the new month. I think if we start to push through in September, then I think there's this really potential for, for going higher. If in turn we are um, respecting this trend line, then we could be doing something like this, for instance, which would then, potential have the potential to to get this 
which I think last leg lowering, but that's music for September, right? Uh, this this last leg lowering that that is a fresh possibility that we are building on, unless we start to break. Okay, um, gold as well. I told you that we 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 had to monitor those 1930s. We haven't broken here. We're still a bit away. 19, call it 4550, 4552. Um, that's an that's an important zone in my opinion. For as long as we're below. We, we can have something similar like in uh, like in silver for instance and and perhaps start retest this this 1900 at some stage um the 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 jury is out there and um but it's worth and especially going into september then it's going to be really worth watching a few uh, a few instruments what they are starting to uh, to really tell us okay um anything else ozzy capped 6490 that's it one two attempts and and we are we're back down I'm not saying that we are going to go back down here but because in turn that was a, a, a bit funny because we had a lower um cpi overnight and uh, we also had weak building approvals or weak uh, uh, um construction numbers and yet we we managed to 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 get back into the 70s um this morning um i was a tad long and then i went like yeah all right i mean on on those numbers it should not really be there so i took them off i'm just waiting but uh, it's funny that we did not stay low on weaker uh, inflation data and um, that is something that we need to keep in mind if the market does not uh, react to 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 CPI as much anymore because we are on a trend and a known trend. Uh, then you have to look at uh, for something else, right? Um, now, uh, what else? Yeah, the Kiwi already done. CNH um, still uh, nothing burger around uh, around seven thirty. I guess as well that we have to wait for September now to see what the investors want to do with this. Okay. Um, I'm I'm very very tiny in it, and uh, um, really I'm waiting for for fresh uh, developments. And uh, really, for now that's it, mate. Uh, I don't have much wait. else to 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 talk about. Yeah, I'll take it back quickly. Yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah. always it's always tough when when we have like this mix of uh, a lot of data coming out and then and then the end of month although august should not be your your biggest month in volumes but uh, uh and when they start to contradict each other a little bit it's um for the short term trader at least if you have longer term views that that that's a different thing but for the short term trader it's not an obvious um daily update i would say right now yeah can you see my screen okay yeah mate yeah, cool. Uh, so just to Lally, um, I'm assuming, I don't know, you might have a different uh, DMA, but my four hour 200 DMA, uh, my four hour DMA is uh, just below the price at the moment, not resistance. So 1934, but you've also got the daily there as well, the 55 DMA around that level as well, around that 33, 34 area, uh, 32s even. Um, so it's a bit of, can it define up and down trend bias i don't i wouldn't say it defines the trend bias it's just another support or resistance point um so it's important how you trade it you know there's a bit of a zone in this 30 40s so there's a lot going on in this zone if, if we're above 40 then it's looking more constructive for the upside if we're below 30 it's 35 it's looking less so and looking more bearish so sometimes you know you add all the text together it's not going to be one number and you define it by whether it's above or below a particular area. Um, and that's all, all you can trade. But just on your point on bias, we, and Kay will answer this as well. It's not that we have a, a bias for a currency on its own. We have a bias based on fundamentals, on news, on the data, on what's going on, on sentiment. That's what drives certainly my bias for a pair um, or any asset. It's not, I think, this is going to be bullish, therefore I'm going to buy it. Um, it's a, it, it's just part of how we trade every day. You build in the picture, what the data is doing, what this is doing. It's not saying about, you know, we're going to be trading the rate cut trade end of this year, beginning of the next year. 
you know, I'm saying this now in September and none of you are going to remember what I've said in September when we're in, in February. Um, but if we're in the middle of the rate cut trade in February, you know, that's what I'm looking for. I'm looking for it now. That's what I feel. That's what the data's indicating that if we're going to get a softness that we're already seeing, it's likely to grow. Um, and it's going to be around that point that the market really turns to trading rate cuts. That's what it feels like at the moment. Um, it could all change with the data uh, up until that point. But that bias is only built on sentiment, price action, data, fundamentals, central bank speakers. Um, that's what goes into the mix and deciding whether something's bullish or bearish and how we want to trade it. Anyway, that's that. Um, keep an eye out for the ADP later. Um, as we know, it can be a bit hit and miss regarding um, what it indicates for the NFP, but we're in heavy data dependency mode. So uh, that 195K expected is going to be a bit of a marker um, well, if there's a big variation uh, and everyone will jump on it. Um, keep an eye also on our social media for its analytics because I will have the NFP compo up shortly after the show. Um, have a great day, everyone. Thank you, Kay, uh, for all your valued input as usual. And we shall see you all tomorrow. Thank you, everybody. Hey, traders, this is Blake Morrow with Forex Analytics. Thanks for stopping by our YouTube channel. Don't forget to like these videos, share them, and subscribe to our channel so you don't miss any of the content that we provide here for free. Thanks for stopping by. I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.